back to CTF Walkthroughs. I'm your host, Callie Surfer, and today we have part two of the red teaming capstone from TryHackMe. This is the Mammoth Sandbox Active Directory environment designed by Amoeba Man. Props to Amoeba Man. This is the, the greatest CTF that I've ever had the pleasure of trying. There are 20 flags, and in part one, you saw the very last step where I executed the fraudulent $10 million Swift bank transfer. And in this video, we're going to go back to the beginning of the whole hack and we'll start with OSINT, that's open source intelligence. We'll be looking at publicly accessible websites, scanning for valuable information, enumerating for user or potential usernames. We'll also look at company structure and high value targets, as well as formatting and email conventions within that company. Um, after we finish with OSINT, we'll move on to analyzing our Nmap scans so we can get a lay of the land and a look at the network and um, hosts running services and open ports and whatnot. Um, we'll also do an attack on the email server using the SMTP protocol, and we'll use a tool called Hydra to do a brute force a valid credential that can be used to log into the email. And in the very last part of this video, we'll go ahead and log into one of the employee's emails that we've compromised and take a look at their inbox. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so we're up and running here, connected to our red teaming capstone VPN file. And we're going to first do our OSINT, that's our open source intelligence. We're looking through the reserves website, looking at the employees, and we'll study the names of the pictures and find that they actually left directory listing enabled. So we're able to just look at a list of employee names. So this is a um, information disclosure that's unnecessary and helps us as the attacker to figure out the uh, possible usernames in both email and also Active Directory accounts. So let's create a list now with Sublime Text. And I'll use a little trick here to edit this faster. Uh, Control Shift A for select all, and then Control Shift L for line mode. And I'll bring those lines to the left. Let's try it one more time. Control Shift A, Control Shift L, and then press the left key. And now we can delete all of the extra text around these usernames. We'll just get rid of this one here. We don't need that line. And we'll do again Control Shift A, Control Shift L, and then hit the right key. And now we can bring back all of these lines back to the usernames. All right, so we'll have to neaten up those October lines there on 13 and 14. Whoop, control Z to undo. Okay, and one more backspace. And then we'll just clean up these extra lines here. So now we have a list of potential usernames. We'll use this list today to brute force attack the SMTP protocol, that's the email, and see if we can get some valid credentials. So back to our OSINT, let's see if we can find the email convention. And in the Contact Us page, we see an email address. So the domain is corp.thereserve.loc. We'll add that on to the end of each line here. All right, and we can do that as well with Control Shift L, right, and then cut and uh, paste that in there. Oh, didn't want to remove everything. There we go. Now we'll save that text file. Now we have a list of passwords, or not passwords, usernames. 
use our email usernames. So in our notes, I'm using Joplin for taking notes today. Um, I have some notes about the walkthrough. And let's get our syntax for Hydra. And we'll go ahead and set up our brute force. Um, one more thing to do first, though, is to create a custom password list. And in the description for this red team capstone, it gives us a base list of passwords. And then it asks us to expand upon that list using the numbers and symbols. So here's our list of symbols to add. And we'll add one number and then one symbol. So first I'll just remove that custom passwords list that I had from my last attempt. And here's our base list. Actually, that, that was the custom one. We'll remove that. Okay. Now we can create our custom password list. It's weird. I don't know why there was a percent sign there. It's not actually in the text document though. Okay, so in the resources uh, folder, we will find our base list. And let's cat that out to see what's on that list. And so to start, we've got a bunch of versions of reserve, the reserve, reserve bank. Here's our policy for the passwords. We wanna make sure they're at least eight characters long and they include at least one number and one special character. So I created a custom rule here in John the Ripper. This is uh, a rule for our red team capstone, and we're using John notation there to add one uh, number and then one symbol pulled from that list of symbols. So we'll run it now with the flag tac tac rules colon red team, red team capstone, and we can have it generate an expanded list using this rule. Now you could use chat GPT for this as well, uh, but John works very well for um, precise list creation. So we'll send the output to a new file and we'll call that Put in the walkthrough and we'll call it passwords.txt. Okay, it created it super quickly. And now we have our expanded list. So let's go back to our Hydra syntax now and we'll do our brute force attack. Here it is. So we use, notice we use the uppercase L to denote that there's a list of usernames and the uppercase P tag for a list of passwords. If you had one single uh, username or password to brute force, then you would use the lowercase flags. So we're gonna hit the webmail server here on dot 11, and we'll use a very verbose mode to see all the output. And we just started our attack this could take a while, so I may have to skip forward in the video until we get some results. And boom, we got Laura.wood, and her password is not very secure. You see it there on the screen. Now we can prove that we have access by logging in to her email account, and we're using a program called Evolution here on Linux to access her email. So let's go ahead and set it up here so that we have access to our compromised account. And then we can take further steps to continue our enumeration and continue our attack vector as we work towards the Active Directory environment. I'm checking to see if I have the host name in my Etsy hosts file. And 
and it looks like I do. It's mail.thereserve.loc. And I'll just update my IP to make sure that it works. And while I'm at it, I'll update the other hostname IPs. Because we've changed subnets, uh, because I've attempted this challenge several times. So over on our evolution setup, we'll put in the IP address for our server. Just double check that one. Dot 11 is the web mail. That's correct. And, oh, we got another hit there, Mohammed.Ahmed, and an equally weak password. So we have two compromised credentials. Let's go ahead with Laura Wood and put in her email address. And no encryption there on receiving email. Authentication is with a password. And then for sending email, I think we'll use a TLS on a dedicated port. And here I'll put in the host name, mail.thereserve.loc. Okay, that looks good. We'll finish it. And it should prompt us now for Laura Wood's password. And there it is. So we'll drop in her compromised password from our Hydra brute force attack. And we'll go ahead and log in now as Laura.Wood. So we could, from here, we could launch a phishing scheme to try to get access to more accounts. Uh, we could impersonate Laura Wood and send out some uh, malicious emails with links that would spawn rev shells or other tricks work. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.